Wouldn't it be so great if you could shoot webs from your hands just like Spider-Man? Well, I can. I just made my own real Spider-Man web shooters. They use a homemade web fluid that I devised myself, and today you guys get to see how I made them. I can confidently say that out of all the web shooters I've made, this is definitely my best attempt so far. So how do these work? Well, I'm going to take you step by step through exactly how I built these, starting with the design. Early on when I started designing the web shooters, maybe a few months ago, I took a step back and asked myself, what do I want these web shooters to accomplish? The easy answer would be, yeah, I want to make small devices that go on my wrists and can hold several miles of a compound that solidifies in the air to be stronger and more flexible than steel, and sticks to buildings so I can swing. But let's be honest here. That's quite a daunting task, probably why so far it only truly exists in fiction. And I'm not Peter Parker. So instead of trying to accomplish all that right off the bat, we have to start smaller, then work our way up, you know? So I set some pretty simple goals. Firstly, I wanted the web shooters to be as compact as I could make it. Then I thought, since I've been doing mechanical activation and there are some disadvantages to that, which I'll discuss in a moment, I want these web shooters to have a better firing mechanism. And most obviously, I want my web shooters to shoot a web fluid that resembles the characteristics of Spider-Man's web as much as I can make it. Additionally, it would be nice if I could also get some improved basic stats from my previous web shooter iterations too. So I took this list and said, Let's start there and worry about everything else later. Okay, real talk. That is absolutely not exactly what happened. I truthfully set, like, half a dozen more goals because that's how I am, but hey, nothing's ever perfect in the first try. Or even the first few tries, so... Anyways, by looking at my previous designs, as well as researching the current collection of real web shooters that exist online, I've made a generalization that you need five basic things to make these devices work. A webbing, the material that you're firing, be it a chemical solution or just actual ropes and grappling hooks. A cartridge, simply whatever sort of housing that the webbing is stored in. A propellant, the form of energy that actually allows the webbing to escape from the web shooter, this is usually pressure. A firing mechanism, the mechanism that causes the propellant to push out the webbing. And a trigger, that last one seems pretty self-explanatory. And here are the ones used by pretty much all of mine so far. But I especially want to focus on improving these. Now you may have noticed that I have yet to discuss one of, if not the single most important thing about all of this. The web fluid. Now it took me a while to figure out a suitable web fluid, I tried several different materials, and I may have been okay at high school and college chem, but I'm certainly no expert. So designing web fluid for me is basically like throwing darts at a board and seeing what works. Now since I know a lot of you are going to ask, in fact a lot of you already have, I am going to make a tutorial. It's probably going to be the video after this one, so if you want to catch it, you should definitely subscribe. Hey, wouldn't it be kind of funny if I just said that and then like, vanished off the internet forever? I'm still running some tests to try and figure out how I can improve my current web fluid, you know, finding the ideal proportions for each ingredient, experimenting with different solvents, etc. But what I can tell you right now is that, contrary to what many of you have been assuming in my comments, all evidence indicates that it is almost completely non-toxic so far. And I'll also tell you that it's based on evaporation and uses polyvinyl acetate as the primary component. But the important thing is, how strong is it? How much weight can it handle right now? Well, why don't we ask Venom? Pretty much zero. But wait, 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 wait. There is a way to make it stronger. And that is via a reaction with water. It just so happens that I can't implement this into my current web shooter design. But maybe we can modify the mechanics of my web shooters in the future to cater to this effect, or find a way to achieve the same result using evaporation instead. Now, getting back to the web shooters, I've decided that for the firing mechanism, I'd like to use electric solenoid valves, which work by actuating an orifice using an electromagnetic coil. This is going to provide me with a couple advantages. Firstly, I get to get rid of the large mechanical levers that were in all my previous web shooters. And they also have a much faster actuation speed, which basically means that I'm going to be wasting a lot less web fluid. As far as switching the valve on and off, I'm going to be driving it with a small NPN transistor, and this part may be overkill since I'm only going to be turning these valves on for like a couple seconds at a time max. I'm also going to throw a diode in there to make sure that no current can flow back into the transistor and damage it. There isn't going to be a whole lot of components, but wire management can always be pretty annoying, especially when in a limited space like the housing I'm trying to make. 
I really wished I could be able to design and get my own printed circuit board, just like Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man did. Luckily, that's where today's video sponsor, PCBWay, came in. PCBWay is a high-quality prototyping service company that can make your custom electronic designs a reality at affordable prices. That's not all either. Outside of fully customizable circuit boards, they also offer CNC machining and 3D printing services with a variety of different material choices for all your prototyping needs. I was extremely happy with the boards they made me, and I will likely be using their services again for future videos. These are the components I used, and here is a circuit diagram. The triggers were just push buttons that I wired to the main circuit and then wrapped in Kapton tape. Then I used 10 milliliter syringe plungers to make them easier to press. The cartridges were made from 5 milliliter syringes with butane torch valves epoxied at the bottom, and fixed onto the valve with the modified lure lock fitting. Now there's a reason that I used syringes. Originally, the idea was to construct my web shooter cartridge in a similar fashion to my lightsaber, where there would be a rubber plunger pushed by expanding butane gas when the exit valve opened. I thought that theoretically it would increase the range of my web shooter by giving it a more laminar-like flow. Unfortunately, while the mechanism technically worked, it didn't achieve the desired effect. See, I'm kind of an idiot for not realizing this sooner, but my web fluid needs to be atomized in order to solidify properly. I can't fire it in concentrated streams and still expect it to reach a solid state. I made this realization pretty late into my development, so I had to improvise a dip tube design last minute, and it worked better with the solenoid valve than I actually thought it would. Now for the housing itself, I decided to base my design on the web shooters from the Amazing Spider-Man film. May not be the easiest design to adapt, I mean, even Tom Holland doesn't think it makes sense how ridiculously compact these things are. But I just love the design. I love the red LED glow every time he fires them, and something about the idea that Peter made his first web shooters from old watches is just so sick. But I'm not going to be using real watches, because they're too short. Instead, I used a resin SLA 3D printer to get my cases done. I actually had to redesign this part several times. Some of the reasons were practical, and some of them was just my perfectionist nature kicking in. I didn't like the way they were coming out, especially the finish. It made it look more like a cheap plastic toy than anything, if you ask me. Luckily, I found a method using graphite powder, and it looked infinitely better. My camera does not do justice to how good this looks in person. For the casing cover, I hit it with some black paint and then some silver leaf rub and buff. I also cut out some red and green acrylic pieces to go over the LEDs. I decided to make leather cuffs similar to the ones from the film as well. After experimenting with a few different leathers, I eventually settled on this nice brown one. Now, I've never done leather work before this, so forgive me if my work looks a little amateurish, as this was my first time stitching leather. Also, I can't believe I didn't realize this, but I laser cut the leather and then I forgot that I could have just made the stitching holes with the laser cutter as well. But anyways, I hand stitched everything and then I hammered in some button snaps so that I could put it on my wrists. After that, I printed some nozzles, painted them, and all that was really left to do was to fill up the cartridges and put these web shooters to the test. So let's go over some final notes. Firstly, did I manage to accomplish all of the goals that I set out to at the beginning of the video? Well, let's see. Given all of the individual components that went into this, I do believe I managed to get the design to be pretty compact. I also successfully incorporated electrically triggered solenoid valves instead of mechanical ones and levers like I used to. It obviously shoots cool webs, so we're good there. And finally, I do think that these perform better than all my other web shooters as well. First off, the capacity is higher and it also uses the fluid much more efficiently. My last version was only good for about 3 to 5 shots, where this one, given that the cartridge has been filled properly, is good for up to 10. And though I haven't measured it specifically, I think I saw an increase in firing range as well. Now for the negatives. 
It was a mistake to try and use JB Weld to bond a lot of this, because it turns out it doesn't adhere very well to polypropylene, which is what syringes are made of. I should have used an epoxy that's more well suited for plastic to metal connections. Also, next time I build web shooters, I think I should put the solenoid valves on the cartridge itself, because with this one you have to fill up the cartridge, attach it to the web shooter, and then pressurize it. It's also very much worth noting that these valves have an unfortunate tendency to clog up after the excess webbing is cured and it prevents the internal spring from moving. You can prevent this from occurring by running solvents through the valve several times after use, but it's still kind of a pain. And that also goes back to the valve on the cartridge thing that I was talking about just a second ago. Because while you would still have to clean the valve, if it does clog, at least your entire web shooter isn't screwed. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and share it. I'm going to be doing a lot of Spidey content in the near future, so be sure to subscribe so you can catch all of that. I'll see you later.